So this is part two of my experiments in real-time volumetric video on mobile VR from Google Jump Footage. This time we'll actually be using displacement to create actual 3D meshes. I've also been looking into point clouds. There's a really cool project by Bodhi Donsalar. There's a link in the description below to a video on YouTube of his project. So yeah, I highly recommend checking that out. But right now, since this is going to be a really long video, let's just go ahead and get started by recapping what we did last time. So we have a sphere, and it's got an equirectangular texture on it. Right now the parallax mapping is more or less off, but you see as I turn it up, things that are nearer seem to move more. But as we zoom out here, you can see it's sort of a trick. It's not really changing the geometry of the sphere in any way just kind of makes it look shiny. But when you're in the center of the sphere, it appears to add that parallax effect. Okay, so if we just change scenes now, you can see I've got a new sphere. I can just look around and it's just a normal sphere. Let me just show you real quick. If you look in the lower right corner here, you can see this is the original footage that we get from Google Jump. It's top and bottom stereo. So one eye sees the top and one eye sees the bottom and then the same goes for the depth as well. And so if you look in the shader, if I turn off render stereo, you can see that the sphere now has a top and bottom. So if I turn that on, basically it cuts it in half and shows one eye the top and one eye the bottom. Now if I turn up discard stereo, then we're showing both eyes this, the same image and we're basically discarding half of the texture. So that doesn't really come into effect right now, but it will in VR. So if I just turn up the magnitude here, you can see already we're getting some depth. Let me just move back to the center a little bit more. So you can see we've got that, that same sort of depth effect. And if I zoom out here, you can see we've actually changed the geometry of the sphere now. And I'll just slide that back to make it look a little more natural. And so yeah, this is actually really cool. You can see, you know, the people pop out, the telescope pops out. You can see the ledge. You really get a sense of the space in three dimensions. So I'm just gonna spin it around. You can kind of see things from different angles. Let me just go back to the center here. So now if I move over here, you can kind of see that my friend Danny's elbow will actually occlude those people back there. And also look at the background. You can see that those people kind of move separate from the background as well. Now, however, if I increase this infinity distance, you can see that, that actually the city seems to move less now. And the, fur the further away I make it, the further away that distance feels. If I turn it off, you can see that the city moves sort of with the people. If I turn it back on, you can see that I can actually occlude the city with these people. If I zoom out here, you can kind of see what's happening. Everything that has a certain depth that is set by this cutoff below, which we'll get to in a second, just gets pushed further and further away, and you can set that. So that makes the distance move less you know, in parallax as you move the view around. And here's that infinity cutoff. You can see you can set what you want infinity to be. Here it's a zero, and I'll put it at a small number. So you can sort of play with this threshold until you get a, a good infinity distance. So I'm going to go ahead and play it now, and you can see that it actually does work with video. It's going to have some trouble playing back on my computer. I'm running this on a fairly old MacBook, and I'm recording this video as well. So it's probably going to chunk along here. But you can see it does work with video.
So just real quick here, I'm going to go ahead and turn the culling off so that we can see the actual shape we're creating. Um, it's a little easier with calling on just because you can see it inside of the, the sphere, but this looks cool. And you can see as I increase the infinity distance what it's really doing a little better. And so there, so I've turned calling back on, and now you can sort of just see right in there. So let's go back to the center here, and I've got one more thing to play with. I'll just go ahead and turn this cube on here. And you can see, as I move it around, because we have that depth information, we're creating the shape. This cube can just play around in 3D space, and it can occlude behind people, it can go through these people, you see how it now occludes behind this lady, this family. So that's, you know, that's sort of just a little fun to play with a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this video, just because I don't want to be too boring. But I just kind of move it all around behind people. So I'll just pull back here and you can see it move around in the, in the space a little bit. Okay, so now just for a little fun, um, I'm going to play some other content. This is the non-interactive version of the music video we shot for the band The Cooties called VR. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and play this and then pause it real quick. And then go down here and turn the magnitude up. And now you can see we have this and some things look Pretty nice. This video is also sped up to twice as fast to not be too boring. So we're going to zoom around a little bit here, but you can see uh, these columns look pretty good. Uh, we get this keyboard looks really nice. My friend Christopher there holding that camera looks pretty good in 3D. So we get some really nice depth information here actually. I'll go ahead and play again. It's not going to play very well on my computer, but you can see that you know the depth information does play back with the video. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and so, sort of move around so you can see the geometries. It's probably going to do a couple frames at a time, but you can see we can go down here real low and sort of move around them. Oh, there's a scene change. And you can see we still get some good information on them, on their standing there. Christopher looks good with the camera right there. Um, we get some good in 3D information on these carts. I really like the C-stand with the light on it, and that's me at the fan there. I think that turns out really nicely. So yeah, we get some really, really nice depth information. I think it's actually really impressive what you can do. This is all just shot with GoPros. We don't have any LiDAR or anything like that. This is all just video. So I think it's really impressive what Google Jump is capable of. So let's go into VR real quick. Uh, we're gonna look at our test scene again at the Griffith Observatory. So right now we're in stereo and uh, the sphere is just flat. It's forced mono, you can kind of see that the texture jumped a little bit because now both eyes are seeing the same image. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the depth multiplier up to 14, and move around a little bit. You can sort of see the parallax effect a little bit. So now I'm gonna move a little more extremely. You can see the people sort of occlude behind this balcony here. So now we've turned the depth multiplier down to zero with the same extreme movement. You can see it's really hard to even tell. Everything sort of moves together. But if I turn the multiplier back up and do the same movement, you can really really feel like you're moving behind this balcony and, and in this space. You can really see the telescope moves because it's closer to you, especially as you move sort of closer to it. And if you don't use ex such extreme movements, it's a little more convincing. So now if we turn the infinity distance up a little bit, you can kind of see that the background 
doesn't move with the picture so much. It really does look like it's really far away. The issue is that you get sort of this weird artifacting as the vertices are pushed further into the distance and are warping around, so you get this the weird warping effect around the edges. As I turn the infinity distance down, that goes away, and of course as I turn it up, it gets worse. So now if we come over here and turn this cube on, you can just kind of spin around. And it's a little difficult to control, so you'll forgive me. But it can occlude behind over there. So let's just move it out a little bit into the city and move it down. And you see how it occludes nicely behind the balcony there? That's pretty cool. Can make it go further into, this, into the distance there, into the city. Now, if the infinity distance were lower, it would clip at the edge of the sphere. Of course, I could write a shader for it that would always draw it, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. One thing I think is pretty neat, if we bring this closer here, I can just have it go down right into this ledge right here. It's not perfect, of course, but I think it's pretty cool. So now if you see my friend Danny here walking towards the cube, and he walks right through it, which I think is very cool, and it occludes behind him. And it occludes behind these people here. If I just leave it here, he walks right through it and occludes in front of it. And then you'll see this lady walk right through it. Very cool. Actually, I think let's do that again, and I'll just sort of move the joystick around here so you can see that the cube sort of stays in 3D space with everything. Okay, and let's just take a look real quick at the music video. A quick plug, um, links are below if you're interested. There's a version on the Gear VR that is fully interactive, so every time you look around, the video changes. We're watching the non-interactive version right now, which is available on YouTube. A link also below. You've been a bad, bad boy, and now you're under house arrest. You want to venture out, play games with all your friends. There was a little VR star wipe right there. Quick note, that might be the first star wipes in VR. Possible, I'm not entirely sure. So yeah, I mean, I think this is, gives a good um, sense of, of depth and movement. Especially on this cart here with this prop rock right there. It looks really cool. If I move it up and down and left and right, that cart also looks very cool. So you're tired of playing the same old video games. The screen is too small and you're back. I'm just going to sort of wiggle the joystick around a little bit, just to give you guys an idea of the 3D shape and all the depth and everything. Oh, and there's, you can see that our depth multiplier might be a little high there.
So yeah, I guess that's it. Oh wait, not quite. There's one more thing. Um, so here we have a different scene. Uh, looks very similar, but actually if I go ahead and hit play and pause real quick, you can see everything is made of points instead of vertices. And if I play, you can see everything just sort of moves around in points. So at the beginning of this video, I talked briefly about the point cloud technique that Bodhi Donsilar had been working on. I sent him some of my Google Jump footage, and he sent me back a video that really is very impressive, and it's much more impressive than what I have here, so I really recommend... There's a link in the description below to a video of his project. Um, I really recommend checking that out and checking out his other projects. He's been working on this for his graduation thesis, and it's very cool. I'm not sure if he's ready to share the Google Jump footage yet, so I'm not going to show it right now, but... It's very impressive. I think it's really cool. People have been asking me if I'm going to release the code or an app or something like that. Um, I would like to release the app. If I don't, I will release the code, but uh, I'm going to try to work on something. If you like this sort of thing, please subscribe to my channel. There might be a part three. I'm not sure, but thanks for watching.